Russia hacking that has been taking place and what they're really going after and how they're doing it. All right. Now, with these hacks that are coming from Russia, and we know they're coming from Russia, the war has started. All right. I have said all along, if the war is going to start, it's going to start with all these different types of hacks. Now, why is this very important to all of us? It's because of what they're hacking. These people have found a loophole in a communication program that the United States government has that they communicate between all the different branches of the government. It's called Move It. Now, what they have done is they found this loophole, so they got in. Once they got in, they started disrupting, shutting things down, and doing all this kind of stuff. Now, why is this important? Why do we care about the federal government? This is why. We have to really be paying attention to this because these people aren't just trying to shut down this like, you know, a little branch or something like that. They went after the energy sector. They shut them down. They haven't been able to communicate. They're working on getting everything back up and online. They're going after certain nuclear sites and everything else as far as uh, nuclear energy and this type of stuff. The way that they all communicate with the federal government with all the nuclear analysts and that whole section of the government. They're going after certain different parts of the government agencies and everything else with this particular hack. The government has, all of a sudden, now they've found that there is another program that has a loophole in it, and they're not sure if the hackers have figured that one out yet or not. They're working on a fast patch, as they called it, fix that program and they're still trying to fix the other one because the hackers have took control what better way to hit america than through a cyber attack and this came from russia we know that okay i think it came from a group called clop i think it was clop these group of people they came in they they found a way in and boom now if they start shutting down things if they get in and they can get control of a lot of our different communications throughout the government, throughout the energy sector, the nuclear sector, um, whatever else they could probably go after. You know, they could shut things down. They could cause disruptions with um, payments that have to be paid to either like senior citizens or to veterans. Um, they could cause all types of havoc here. Now, you would think that the federal government would really wise up. Now, a lot of these hackers in our country that they have busted and put in jail, I think what they should really do is pull some of these guys out and give them the opportunity to redeem themselves for the good old red, white, and blue and put them to work and have them go after these other hackers. Now, would that be so difficult to do? I really don't think so. Because a lot of these people are really, really smart in what they do. And even if they can't get in there and try to figure out, okay, hey, what's going on? Why are they being able to find this? Have them check out a lot of our different programs. Make sure they're up to snuff. There's no back doors or anything else. And this way here, maybe we could get a little bit ahead of the game and get control of this. Meanwhile, we could also have them going after Russia, like Russia is going after us. I'm a firm believer in, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Maybe some of you, uh, um, I don't want to use the word older. Let's use the word wiser people have heard that saying before. We have to really sit back and wonder, why wouldn't this work? You know, we have to protect our own infrastructure and they are going after it big time. Okay, and I think this is exactly where the war is going to start. It's going to start with cyber security, cyber attacks and everything else. They're going to go after anything and everything. They're going to look into the stock market, Wall Street and everything else. These people need to be really paying attention and making sure that their programs are all up to date and and having somebody check these things out because they're going to go after this stuff. Are they going to go after like me and you? Um, probably not. What they're probably going to try to do is 
you know, they're going to want to try to shut up maybe some of the larger channels that are out there. I wouldn't be surprised. They're also going to be going after any type of government agency, any major infrastructure, any power grids that they can get into, and so on and so forth. As you can see, we're talking about the major impacts that can affect the most people with this stroke of a key. And that's where we're at right now. On top of that, I think this year, for one, we all know this country is so divided. It's disgusting. But this year, I think it's going to get even worse. What I'm talking about is the upcoming election in 2024. And we all know what has taken place this past week. And um, whatever side of the fence you're on, that's fine and dandy. I really don't want to get into politics. But here's the problem. We are so divided in this country. It doesn't seem like there's anything that can bring us back together. I just don't see it happening. I see creating uh, more problems down the road. I see more chaos coming down the road with the closer we get to these elections. We have all these people and they're all saying, you know, he, he, he did this, she did that, we did that. No, we didn't do this. We didn't do that. And in a sense, I think, I don't know, but I speak for myself. A lot of people were just getting tired of listening to it. I want to know what people are going to do for this country. I could care less about all the other BS that is going on out there. I want to know what people are doing in government for the common man and what they're doing to preserve jobs, fix the economy. What is their plans on reducing the debt? What is their plans on trying to rebuild our military since we've given so much to Ukraine. You know, we've been so generous and everything else. How are we going to replenish a lot of these products that we may need in the near future? You see, all these other countries that really don't like us too much, they all pay attention to this stuff, folks, because they start adding up everything. Well, they just sent over another few billion dollars worth of this ammo or these rockets and these tanks and these planes and all this kind of stuff. Hmm, are they depleting their, their reserves? Maybe we should really ponder doing something. This is how this sick world thinks now. So I'm really concerned and I'd really like to know what the government has planned for protecting us, what they have planned for trying to fix all the problems that are out there. And there's a ton of them. What are they going to do to secure like the social security for the senior citizens and make sure that the vets are taken care of, they're getting their money and there's no problems there and they're getting the benefits that they have earned and deserve to say on top of that we have the inflation now luckily this past week a uh, good old pal there he did not raise the interest rate again which is a very good thing because i think it would have really really hurt us really bad what a lot of people don't really understand is is what's really happening is we've been printing money like crazy now we're not the only ones all right there's a lot of countries out there that are printing a way more money than we are china india all these places they're printing this money faster than we can count okay and they're trying to build a stockpile of money because they're all vying for to be the number one currency in the world and at this point i don't see anybody overtaking the american dollar i don't see where that's going to be an issue or a problem i think what's going to really happen is if our stock market doesn't get straightened out on top of the base policy of inflation with all the things that go into this with not raising the interest rates anymore maybe holding off for a little while and think, see if things will start to cool down and bring things back down i mean people already don't have money to <laughs> buy groceries uh, let alone spend it on a big screen TV. So we have to really wonder what's going to take place here. You know, you have a lot of families that are struggling right now, especially in the summertime. For one, a lot of people don't think about, unless you're living the dream, if you have kids and it's summertime, you either have to pay for daycare, summer camp, or a babysitter to watch your kids. Now, if your kids are older and they can fend for themselves, well, consider yourself one of the lucky ones. But if not, you have to pay all these exorbitant amount of prices that these 
people and places charge. Now, a lot of the schools do offer like summer school, summer classes, summer camps, and all this kind of stuff. And it's, you don't have to really pay for it that much. Some you do, some you don't. If that is one way that you can uh, try to save yourself some money, it may be something you want to look into because right now money is so tight for so many Americans. The credit card debt in this country it is all time high. The foreclosure rate in this country is at all time high. We're living the housing bubble all over again of 2008 through 2012. You know, I mean, that was a whole period of time before it really straightened up. But when it really crashed, I foresee something like that happening because a lot of people, they get their, um, their first mortgages and stuff, say they don't have really good credit. So what happens is, is a lot of these so-called banks, they will give these people a loan and they'll put them on an arm, which means their interest rate fluctuates with the interest rate that the feds keep raising. So you see what happens here is the more the feds raise that, the more their payment goes up, in which case the more they can't afford. So we have to sit back and wonder what is going to be the needle that pops the balloon? Because we can't keep living this so-called dream that we're in and expect for everything to be okay. We have to concentrate on the warnings and the reason why we have to dig in and we have to dig in now. Am I saying that you don't have time to prepare? No, I am not. I am not saying that one bit. But what I am saying is you have to make these very hard decisions on what you are going to be doing to be prepared. From what I am talking about is this. Well, there's no more warnings. If you people haven't seen the writing on the wall, if you haven't really been paying attention, shame on you. If you have, I'm hoping that you have been preparing yourself and your family for the just in case. Okay, let's put it that way. Because a lot of people are really scared of this word called preppers. Okay, you don't want to be labeled. And this probably goes maybe for, I don't know, certain generations. Here's the problem. When all this goes down and when everything really goes the opposite way of what we really are thinking it's going to are you prepared are you prepared to wake up to the bad news that things aren't looking so good are you prepared for waking up and realizing you can't access your bank account are you prepared for if you walk into a store and they have a sign up and it says cash only are you prepared to look your family or your kids in the face and tell them when they're hungry we have no food 